So at 912, let us uh, welcome in our panel for today's forum. They include Representative Rocky Miller, Presiding Commissioner from Camden County, Greg Hasty, and Citizen Advocate Stacy Shore. And good morning to all of you. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. morning. Good morning. morning. Uh, we had been talking about voting legislation, uh, I guess uh, it's been <laughs> at least the last couple of months anyway, and uh, some interesting things have uh, come up as a uh, as the discussion continues. Um, of course, some legislation that was proposed by Representative David Wood. He was invited to the uh, the forum, and uh, he's having some uh, uh, family issues that he's dealing with, and so he was unable to make it today. We send out our uh, thoughts to him and his family in hopes that everything uh, is all right. I don't know the, the situation, the severity of the situation, but we hope that uh, he and his family are doing well. One of the things we talked about, a couple of the things we talked about, HB 1885 and HB 1935, after the flooding that uh, we've had the last uh, two times now, last year at the Lake of the Ozarks, legislation has been proposed in uh, a couple of different areas. And uh, some folks seem to think that it may be good for the lake area. Other folks uh, think that it, uh, well, may not be so good for the lake area. And let's let's make folks realize and understand here right up front that this legislation does not apply specifically to the lake area. One of them does, one of them doesn't, I guess. Uh, But uh, the waterways and lakes in the state of Missouri in general. And I, I think one of the things that we also need to understand here is that people that live close to these bodies of water, the Lake of the Ozarks and various rivers and streams that people recreate on, maybe we have a better understanding of of how things go because we live here. So many people at the Lake of the Ozarks, I know all of you sitting in, in here today, have grown up in this area and been around this area for a long time. You've participated uh, on the water. You've enjoyed uh, that time with your families. And, uh, and certainly, any time there's legislation uh, sometimes we, we we have a tendency to want to perk up and uh, say, well, what is this all about? Is this really something we need? And then, of course, the argument's been education versus legislation uh, because some people will say, you know, there's a lot of rules already on the books, and why do we need to add to that when there are things that they can't even enforce now? So that being the case, we thought we would pull together all of the folks that are in the studio and uh, take uh, a, the first hour of the program and kind of discuss this and, um, and, and and kind of, you know, kind of have a nice open discussion about why or maybe why not or the concerns of people. And then in hour number two, we will open up the phone lines to listeners. And uh, then with, of course, Representative Miller being here and uh, Presiding Commissioner Hasty uh, get some thoughts and, and for, uh, for you, Stacy as well, from some of the listeners on their thoughts about some of this proposed legislation. So I think maybe what we need to do first is is talk a little bit about uh, HB 1885. And uh, Stacy, if you'd like to maybe open up the discussion there a little bit, and we'll just kind of pass it down the line. Sure. Thank you so much, KB, for allowing us to come in today. And Representative Miller, thank you for being a part of a conversation that I really appreciate. And Greg, um, as always, appreciate your input on this issue. And just for the record, I think that more than anything, it's just the conversation of understanding I know, Representative Miller, that the lake would acknowledge you've done great things on behalf of Lake of the Ozarks, and many of us are so grateful for the position that you've taken to advocate for our lake. And that's why I'm here as a citizen. I'm I'm here because I love where I live, and I love Lake of the Ozarks. So more than anything, I think if we could just address some questions and concerns, um, and from just your perspective, that's where the the, the place I want to come from. So... The first question that I particular that that I have in reading the legislation, because first of all, I think a lot of us believe that responsible boating is a necessity, that people don't necessarily always respect the rights of other people on the water. There's a concern, and I think that's shared. So I'm not saying that there aren't some concerns, but, you know, that could come through education. I think that where I'm at is that in your bill, uh, HB 1935, I don't believe we need more legislation. I believe we need education. So the first part of the bill, and I think it's an overlooked part of the bill that, that gives me the most heartburn because I think it could be very, very detrimental, is Section 3 of 1935. And it says this, the Department of Public Safety and the Water Patrol Division of the State Highway Patrol may jointly issue a temporary no-wake order under the provision of subsection 1 of this section 
during times when the lake elevation is under 661 for the immediate protection of life or property. The question becomes, with the, public, the Department of Public Safety or another governmental agency or entity getting to define what the protection of life or property looks like, that would appear that it's putting a layer of government between our lake and the people. And it's so subjective in who gets to define that, how do they define it, when do they define it, and why do we need for them, I mean, even under flood stage, to be able to come in and take the lake to no wake, who defines that? Okay, good question. Um, Currently, they can already do this. Right. They can do that. So... The problem is, and the reason that the part of the law is, they can already do that for whatever reason they really want to. The problem is, is anybody can do that. We don't know for sure if it's the governor's office can do that. Ameren can do that. We don't know if the local police departments can do that. What it does is, I think you're misunderstanding the intent and the actual mechanism of the law. Mm-hmm. Um what it does is it says, this is who does it. Now, and in addition, if they feel that for some reason, high winds, tornado, uh, whatever, that the, for some reason they determine, because that's their job. They're the Department of Public Safety. Mm-hmm. Their job is to take care of that. Now, is there some trust in our departments that we have to have? Sure. Um, and do we not have a lot of trust in those departments? No, we don't. Uh, but it's something in it that uh, I, I felt was necessary to help define where we're going. Now, let me kind of move on along that same line. I don't know if you're familiar with House Bill number 51, and that was from the 97th General Assembly. Mm-hmm. That was my first year in there. Mm-hmm. Okay. My first year in there, I proposed a bill that changed the way that the beaches in the state of Missouri are tested Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and closed and people are warned about uh, E. coli at the lake. So we put that in. And honestly, it was uh, DNR was ready for it. uh, And the reason we didn't have uh, we didn't have Sierra Club marching here is because this was actually EPA's language that we used. Okay, so that went that actually got passed 15 minutes ago. Little side note, I was told by the governor's office if I got it on his desk. He would change the the rule. I got on his desk twice early in the Mm -hmm, session, mm -hmm. and he said, no, Mm -hmm. I'm not changing the rule. You're going to have to pass a bill, big boy. Mm -hmm. So that's where we were. Now, here's the funny part of that bill, Mm -hmm. that bill that I think has done a lot of good for the area. Would agree. Absolutely. Appreciate that bill. Well, and, 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 and if I may interject just real quick, a lot of what happens here at the lake makes the national media. Yes. And one of the big problems that we've had over the years, especially with Kansas City and St. Louis, is taking any information regarding E. coli or E. coli in our water or a beach closure and blowing it out of proportion, Mm -hmm. therefore affecting tourism here at the Lake of the Ozarks. Right. And that's why it was so important. But that's not why I brought it up. I brought it up for line four. Line four says the state reserves the right to close a beach in the event of a documented health risk, including things such as, but not limited to, wastewater bypass, spills of hazardous chemicals, localized outbreaks of an infectious disease. Okay. Now that's in there. Right. It's a little bit of trust we got to have that the but state's it's a, not... a that, beach. Define beach, though. Is that in the state parks? It's a beach that they have control over. Right. So it's a state park. Gotcha designated swim beach, right. beaches is where okay. it is yeah i get that but here's the thing they never you know it's been three years now right we had to trust them that they wouldn't come along because it says not limited to they can kind of make up whatever they want totally to get close it. it so that kind of stuff is in legislation you can go through piece after piece after piece and say oh my gosh th- the world is going to end because I don't think anyone's it ever said says that. that. No. Well, actually, what is said is this bill could spell the death of our lake's economy. I, I think it could. <laughs> okay. Can I explain why? But I, 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 please. 
I think that you have to understand also, I want to go to the first part of the bill, but here's the thing, the death of our economy. The fact is, understand that the Department of Public Safety in Missouri, the portal for the EPA, FEMA, and other federal agencies to come into Missouri is through a portal, a bureaucratic agency in the state. That's one of them. That's the, the agency that gives access to FEMA the Dep- uh, and EPA, those different agencies. So when you say for the immediate protection of life or property, they can take the lake, the number one recreation lake in the country, to a no-wake status. Who's making that call? Why? And understanding this, they can do it under 661, under flood stage. Now you say... We need this because we don't know who can close down the lake. When, how many times has that happened, Representative Miller? I think it's happened three times. And and when were those times? I I honestly can't remember. I just I know remember. of two. Yeah. One was last summer during the flood last summer, which I don't think people had a problem with. And here's my point: when the, the other go- one was in '86, and I think yes. '90 was '93. Go- uh, Larry Witten shut down the lake in '93 so during do it yeah. because of flooding. Yeah. The fact is that law already or it exists that it can be done but here's the issue has it been abused doesn't appear so three times ever so to create a law that hands more power and subjectivity to a bureaucratic agency in the state know this that when you say again for the immediate protection of life or property they can take the lake under flood stage which is what this the genesis of this bill was really about to a no wake status i'm not saying the sky is falling that's ludicrous I'm saying that if we I lose... I think saying that it's going to kill you know what? the death of our lake's economy oh, is ludicrous. You know what, Rocky? I, th- I think you're wrong. Well, I, read I, this. I, I mean, Just I read apologize. This. I, I've it's, read it. I wrote it. Here's the thing. Here's where it came from. You've got to understand the genesis of it. Did I just one day say, you know what? We need to have something like this. No. Here's what happened. I had the marine dealers, and you're like, oh. And I've already... Th- I've actually had people vilify the marine dealers over this Mm -hmm. and i'm like holy cow are you kidding me here's the guys that have the most to lose marine dealers by the way are the people that sell boats right so here we go we have the people that have the most to lose Mm -hmm. if something bad happens to the lake Mm -hmm. i have a lot to lose you have a lot to lose you have a lot to lose yes kb has a lot to lose if if on the death of the lake so here's the problem they come to me and say listen we need to have someone make a decision we need to know who's going to do it, and we need to set up so that it happens. I said, okay, great. So I started doing some research. So that's why I know that there was about three times it shut down. Mm-hmm. I know that other than this year, it only hit 661 UE datum seven times after the Truman Lake was put mm-hmm. in. So we've got those things. They came and said, we'd like to do this. I'm like, okay, great. Let's, we, we currently have a lack of leadership at the top. Zero leadership. We don't know where it's coming from or what's happening. So we want this done. So I said, great. So I filed it. Now, here's the thing. I like the bill. It actually does something. Now, can you pick apart any rule? Like I said, let's look back to House Bill number 51. Oh, my gosh. We give the state the right to to shut down state beaches that the state already has control over. Yeah, but you know what? When they they (laughs) shut down the state beach, what happened to us? What did Kansas City and, yeah. and Lake and, and it was the C- media. Yeah. I think, it I, shut us all down? Yeah, I think that the Lake of the Ozarks over the over the past particularly fifteen years has had some real concerns about outside regulation yes. having a devastating effect on our lake when we don't even know about it. And I'm just going to give you a couple of examples, and, and you know, unfortunately, this was. A, uh, well, state and federal level. In 2006, we had the 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 uh, FERC issue with regard to red line shoreline, and uh, uh, you know, we didn't even know about that until it was already uh, in place, and the and we find out after the fact, and it was a tremendous fight to get a shoreline back. You know, uh, FERC again in in 2010 and 2011. They had already issued an order for the removal of 1,500 houses before we knew that there was an issue. That's right. And it was in a tremendous uphill fight. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then, you know, like Rocky says. I was you, part of that fight. Yeah. As was I. And so, uh, and so uh, then you have the issue, and, and Rocky, bless his heart, he did, he got the job done when, when we were talking about 
you know, uh, people from outside the area coming down and, and making claims that Lake of the Ozarks is 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 dirty when, That's in right. fact, uh, trust me, I've been around here a long, long time. This lake is way cleaner than it was. You can't have a decent loss fight anymore. You know? so, <laughs> so, Statistically, it's so, cleaner. So yeah. I think I think there is a, a among citizens of the Lake of the Ozarks, there has been a developed distrust of the actions of government in high places affecting uh, our livelihood and our way of life. So I think that's a lot of the push pull yeah. here. Uh, so, you know, just uh, we are the number one recreational lake in the country. We've got to guard it. That's and right. uh, absolutely. Uh, that uh, is some good uh, good thought uh, there from you, uh, Mr. Hasty. We appreciate uh, you interjecting at a, a time when we need to jump in and take a quick break, and we'll do that now and come back uh, some more with our voting legislation forum. Again, folks, I'll remind you, we're going to talk with uh, our guests in studio for the first hour, uh, maybe a little bit into the second hour, but we'll definitely leave plenty of time in the second hour for you folks to uh, interact, ask uh, questions, make comments, and let your voices be heard on The Morning Magazine on KRMS. Are you living with congestive heart failure? Visit Lake Regional Health System for a free seminar at 10 a.m. Wednesday, February 24th. Learn how to manage your condition with diet and exercise, plus what to expect if you're hospitalized. This forum is free, but registration is required. Living with congestive heart failure, Wednesday, February 24th at Lake Regional Hospital. Sign up today at 348-8222 or visit lakeregional.com slash events. Lake Regional Health System, here for you. Politicians are failing us. Obama, terrorism in San Bernardino, Nixon and Coster, lawlessness in Ferguson, murder rates climbing. Catherine Hannaway can make Missouri safe and strong. A law and order federal prosecutor, a leader with rural roots who will strive to make Missouri the number one agribusiness state in the nation. Catherine Hannaway, a Second Amendment supporter who helped make conceal and carry Missouri law. As U.S. Attorney, Catherine Hannaway prosecuted 4,000 criminals, putting drug dealers, sexual predators, and white-collar cheats in prison. As governor, Catherine Hannaway's conservative law and order experience can make Missouri safe and strong. Standing up to Obama's EPA, stopping Obama's Medicaid expansion, jobs for Missouri with lower taxes, smaller government, a right-to-work law. Catherine Hannaway, moral values to make Missouri safe and strong. Paid for by Missouri Club for Growth Pack, Melanie Abrajano, Treasurer. Menards has everything you need to update your bathroom. Save big on a new toilet from Mansfield. Upgrade to the American-made ProFit toilet. With everything in one box, it's an easy project that you can get done this weekend. Right now, get the ProFit standard round toilet for only $59 after mail-in rebate. Or get the ProFit tall elongated toilet for only $109 after mail-in rebate. Stop by for these and other great deals. Going on now at Menards. Save big money at the Nards. Discover the power of radio. If you're a business owner and you want to reach new customers, you should consider radio. There are always new customers out there. Whether it's from new families moving into the area, changing income levels, lifestyles, or buying habits to reach that new business. First, they need to know you're there. Discover the power of radio. Hi, this is Barbara Bunch, a trained certified marketing professional. I've been serving this area for almost 11 years. Call me with questions at 302-4646. Critical four words, a new cold war. Rush Limbaugh, weekdays from 11 to 2, News Talk 1150, KRMS. 9.30, it is the morning magazine on KRMS. We're up to 65 degrees, seeing a few clouds roll through. Those will be gone shortly, make way for the sunshine. Beautiful day today, maybe a isolated shower tomorrow, maybe a thunderstorm just uh, briefly, but still a high of 71. Partly cloudy on Sunday. Looks like a high of about 61. We've got our uh, voting legislation forum going on. Again, folks, we'll remind you that uh, we'll begin taking some phone calls next hour from you. We thought we'd take the first hour to kind of uh, establish uh, uh, all of the particulars in terms of what we're talking about and do a little back and forth. We've got Stacy Shore, Presiding Commissioner of Camden County, Greg Hasty, Representative Rocky Miller in the studio. Before we get back into the discussion, I think the question that... Um, is kind of the elephant in the room when we've had these lake closures in the past, and they don't happen that often. Mm-hmm. And and I understand, Stacy, from your point of view, um, you know, putting somebody in control that could possibly close the lake down for any reason, anytime they want. Mm-hmm. But I guess if we've had lake closures in the past, 
Shouldn't it be up to a representative that handles that particular lake to make the decision rather than putting it in the hands of somebody on the state level? And, and, and I mean, I understand and get where you're going, one person with the responsibility to do it. But, you know, we talked about Colonel Larry Witten making yes. the call a while back, and essentially he made the call based on what? His experience, he knows the area, he knows all the highs and lows and, and you know, the, the trouble spots. And even when we had the flood back in July... And the governor made the call. His, I guess his call was based on probably information he was getting directly from the Lake of the Ozarks. And it wasn't necessary to, you know, he's the governor, so I would imagine he makes a decision on something and people understand and get that. So is there a, a real reason to have a law in place that says so-and-so can close the lake down based on, and, and I understand and get that, they can close it down based on this condition, this condition, this condition. So, you know, obviously if there's a flood, they step in, they look at the conditions, they say, yeah, the lake needs to be closed down. But say on a whim, something else happens, and, and, and then they say, well, you know, maybe we need to close the lake down. And so they're not just doing it during floods when it's oh. a safety issue. They're just doing it on a whim because of something else that uh, they I, may feel is necessary to I close the lake down. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I agree with Stacy too. I mean, it's, it's I mean, y- yeah, I mean, we. I would I love to be able to say, to be able to write, if I had to write a law, I don't like writing this stuff. We mm-hmm. have to do it when there's a lack of leadership. Right. And I think... Everyone in this room would agree that there's a lack of leadership. Now, we have, may have a difference of opinion of how it gets done, and that's fine, and a concern about how it's done. But I think if I could point to the colonel of the Water Patrol will set this standard, I think it all goes away at that point. Mm-hmm. A lot of it does. I, I disagree, and let me tell okay, you why. great. Because, I mean, I appreciate your point. Because I think we're coming from the same place. I mean, I get Jay Nixon is not one of my favorite people. He's shown a true lack of leadership. The problem I have is this. Who appoints the commander of the Water Patrol? The governor. Who appoints the head of the Missouri Department of Public Safety? The governor. If you think that the man who appoints those individuals, because, Rocky, I've been at the Capitol for the last three years. I have watched the the commissioner of education step down after things got too heated and she pushed to gov- the governor's agenda. I've watched the, the, the head of the Department of Health and Senior Services step down because she was pushing the governor's agenda. All of this law does, in my opinion. We've also opinion, lost the colonel of the water patrol, right. or the highway patrol. But what happens is you put a bureaucratic layer in between the governor and the people, he still appoints them. So if you think that he does, they won't take his call when he calls them up, if he's the man who appoints them, I think that's naive. And can, I think Can he close still, it today? Well, the fact could is, he, could they've he close only it today? done it. He's only, the governor's only done it one time he, ever, according to you. I, I, and so I, for us to have a well, law. Well, no, no, if, if, if Witten did it. But he wasn't he the was governor. A, he was appointed by the governor. But okay, so, twice ever. In how many years? 35 years? Well, I know. Then I, why do we need this law? I, I know. Do we need it? No. If we have a, if we have a clear leadership, no, we don't. I, and I, I, and I understand that. And I think I've that. said that. No, we don't. But when I have constituents coming to me that have a great deal to lose if we do not uh, do things like control the lake wakes uh, when we have high water. They when we have, have high water, but this part of the legislation says when the when the when the lake is below six sixty one. You just said when we have high water, but you're giving them the authority to if, protect if, life and property under six sixty one. What if we have high winds? That are Most making people large... don't get on the water then. I'm just saying, what okay. if we, we've okay. got a July 4th coming up with high wind warning, and it's going to hit 660.5. Who, why should, why should yeah. the government Who, be able to decide yeah. uh, uh, okay. what's Back safe to and House what's Bill nice, number not 52. safe? Why should the governor... You're comparing apples 50, and oranges. No, it's the exact same it's thing. It's not. It's the state making a decision. But that's on a state park, for a state park. This is, a, this this is, is for a lake. This is the whole waterway, a 1,300 miles of shoreline at Lake of the Ozarks. This shuts down the entire lake, according to St. Louis Post-Dispatch and Kansas City Star. That's not what the law says. So we're going to let the media dis- 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 uh, decipher what that means? Actually, they do. Really? So I'm just saying. I mean, it's, seriously. It's not apples and oranges. It may be oranges and blood All oranges. Right, All right, <laughs> Let me, let, let, me, just, let, me, let, me let me ask you this. Hold Stacey. on, let, let me step yeah. in for just one moment, Greg. Is it is it about who has the right to establish whether or not we close down the lake, or is it more of a responsibility issue? Let's say somebody makes that call and it happens to be on a busy holiday weekend and things aren't as bad as it was meant to be. And you know, people that people that live here know this lake. Most right. people do like the back of, of their course. hand. I mean, I, again, I refer to all three of you in this room. You've lived here. You've grown up here. You know about the lake. 
We know when the lake is good. We know when the lake is bad. We know when to get on the lake. We know when to stay off the lake. If there's high winds, more than likely people are going to stay that live here are going to stay off the lake. For those people that are coming down and visiting, that's another story entirely because that's two different mentalities. So does it become an issue of making the call and then being responsible for that if indeed it's something that needs to be done or you look on it and most of the people say there was no reason in the first place to close down the lake you cost me x amount of dollars yeah. uh, i had uh, an opportunity to to make a, a lot of money this weekend the weather was beautiful it was a bad call now what are you going to do yeah. the same point. person that makes that call is not going to be the person that comes to your business and said sorry right. i screwed up here's all that money you lost yeah, yeah i think for I, I think from my perspective and 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 I'm sitting here with my uh, uh, black, black and white and striped shirt, shirt on <laughs> between two friends that I've known, uh, Rocky, I've, since, I've known since 1974, uh, and uh, you were nine or something like that. Yes, yes. And, and Stacy, I've known since she, before she had children. <laughs> That's so, a long time. So, and, and there are three people sitting here, actually four people sitting in this room are who are deeply passionate about this lake of the ozarks sure. mm-hmm. and we are the number one uh recreational lake in the united states and we're growing yes so and i think from what i'm sitting here listening to it's it's pretty obvious that stacy has concerns about the structure of the chain of command of the decisions that will affect our economy and our lake lifestyle and I think Rocky, from what I'm seeing on the other side, he's sitting here and he's concerned about the fact that it's kind of a hodgepodge right now of when this happens and how it. So, so you know, this is this is something where it's it's a good open discussion yes. about how we move forward because obviously, if we're growing, as time goes on, there's going to have to be more and more decisions made about what we want our lake to. Look. You know, it's just like with Camden County planning and zoning when we're looking about that. You know, what do we want the future of our lake to look like? And I think we're sitting here with four people that absolutely. And, and, and I, think, I think here's the deal. I get where you're coming from. I understand it. I disagree. You disagree with me. We get it. So I think a better idea here is let's beat up on David's bill for a while. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then talk and about how much you know what? How much you know what? How much you know really easy, love easy. Diane? You guys, are, you guys are overloading my circuits here. <laughs> okay, sorry. Can I address one more part? Because sure, you did say sure. that I said that this could shut the whole lake down. I want to address a couple more things with your bill, please. Because you I would love to go into his bill. The, the reason I said that, though, as you know and I know and everyone in this room knows that the people who have businesses on the water, they depend on three months a year. They depend on, essentially, that's when they make the bulk of their business. So if some bureaucrat in Jefferson City gets to define that the lake's too busy, it's hurting people's property, their docks are being hurt every holiday weekend, that it's too much of a danger to people because the waves are too high, then all of a sudden, if a bureaucrat gets to make that call or a corrupt governor makes the call to the Commissioner, which I of, say they currently can, right? Right, but they haven't. Okay, uh, and, and who but says the issue that is because it you take, allows them. To but do you it, take the would. power out of the governor and put it into state statute this way. But the issue is, we lose three holiday weekends this summer. A lot of those businesses will shut down. So the subjectivity of this bill, it's dangerous. I think the I get your intent, but the other part of this bill that I want to bring up real quick is the first part. And you know, you call me a conspiracy theorist, call me whatever you want, but I know what's happening across the country at the hands of our federal government. Understanding that the federal I government... I think I know more than a lot of people I agree. where I'm at. Yeah. But understand this, that when you have Truman Dam, Dam that's o- operated by the Corps of Engineers and the Ameren Dam, which is operated by FERC, which is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission... That's you, not entirely true. Well, it's in, order, in order to get their permit, they have to be in compliance. If you have to be in compliance to get your com- permit, you have to abide by the rules of the federal government. And those are subjective, as we all know. They change all the time. That's a bureaucracy. The issue becomes, this bill says that if the lake goes even one inch above 661, that they, there is no wake. Well, the potential, I see, potential... That if the lake were ever held one inch over the 661 for the duration of a summer, if that's possible, and I think we can argue all day that it's possible understanding the federal government, I think you have to acknowledge one inch over 661, it would take the lake to no wake all summer long. 
that and it could destroy the economy of our whole lake and the whole area i think that's dangerous and we're putting too much trust in the hands of the federal government to do the right thing all the time here's, when the dam's okay, on both Stacey, ends i get where you're coming from however let me point one couple things out real quick sure. one is they could do that today no not yeah. over 661 they could do you that today. spell it out no, in your legislation they, they could do it today but they could but there's they no could legislation sh- they could, somebody could shut down the lake how? today how rocky they, the way they do it now, they can just say it's now no wake. We're the Department of Public Safety. But we they say haven't. It's no wake. But you're going to put it in state law and embed oh, that, it in that, state law. If it law. goes that, okay, great. That moves to my second point. Yes. Pretty sure Amron owns most of the lake. Most of the lake. Yeah. I, I wanted to make sure I said that for but your not benefit. All of the but lake. For, for your <laughs> most for your, of the lake. Most yeah. of the lake. <laughs> they control the water in Lake of the Ozarks for the most part. It's a navigable waterway. So they, that really yeah. the. I mean, that falls No, no, under, okay, great. There's right. an Osage River there. That's right. why it's a navigable waterway. Right. Actually, it's been proven in federal court cases three times that it's mm-hmm. not a navigable waterway. But it's still defined as such under by the EPA Congress, Clean by, Water by Act. By Congress. Gotcha. Okay, let's, let's say that. Yep. I get that. Right. But Ameren owns the dam. But it's but the compliance piece is issued by the federal no, government. No, 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 no. I'm just saying that the, the Bagnell Dam is owned by Ameren UE. Yeah. And they can today decide, you know what? We don't want to operate that anymore. Mm -hmm. Shut it down, drain it, be done with it. Let's remove it. Right. Let's figure it out. They could do that today. They won't. And we found, we talk about the federal government, about what happens here and what happens there. During the battle for the FERC permit to get what we wanted, we didn't want 1,500 structures removed. We didn't want this. It wasn't the permit, Rocky. That was the order. That wasn't wasn't a battle for the permit. That was the end result. That was was an order. No, that was their first order that they came out. It was an order, but not the permitting process. As far as I know, nothing got taken down. But do you know why? I do know why. Yeah. We were on the front lines of fighting our federal government. Because Amron was there with us. That's debatable to some degree to me, in my opinion. Debatable. Amron, Amron was there with us. If they were not with us, we would still be in lawsuits over this thing. I think we still are in lawsuits over There's this There's lawsuits thing. about particular yeah, pieces thank of, you. of ground, but uh, not... On an individual basis that yeah. are still very you relevant. Know, it, it's, it's, it's unfortunate to me that as a part of the global fix uh, that, yes. we, that, that we've left some people hanging. Mm-hmm. I agree. 944, folks, we've got to jump in again and take a break. It's a uh, good discussion we're having here in the first hour of the KRMS Morning Magazine. And when we return, we will uh, talk a little bit more about uh, this, time permitting, uh, probably move to the other legislation as well. And then we will uh, jump in and uh, in hour number two, take uh, thoughts and phone calls from you on KRMS. Is your business philosophy one of prosperity or depression? Are you one of those people who say, business is slow, I can't afford to advertise? The truth is, business is slow because you don't advertise. eBusinessReportViper.com is a free website that is your gateway to thousands of resources all aimed at helping you grow your business through advertising. Maybe you never used radio advertising because you didn't know where to start or you felt overwhelmed by all the options. eBusinessReportViper.com is filled with tips and secrets from industry experts, commercial advice, and access to radio professionals who are there to answer your questions and provide sound advertising help. Get started right now at eBusinessReportViper.com. Sign up for our free eBusiness Report newsletter and start getting valuable tips and advice that you can turn into increased sales right now. After all, if you don't advertise your business, how are people supposed to patronize it? eBusinessReportViper.com. Your best business resource is just a few keystrokes away. eBusinessReportViper.com. Hi, this is Laura Gahn. As a trained certified marketing professional, it's been my pleasure helping businesses grow sales in the Lake Area for nearly 10 years. And I can help you, too. Call me at 348-2772 or go to eBusinessReportViper.com. has begun tonight is a political revolution. News Talk 1150 KRMS. 946 is our time. 65 degrees. More clouds. Uh, but they'll be out of here. No precipitation showing up on our in-studio Doppler weather radar as of right now. This is the uh, special two-hour voting legislation forum on the various bits of legislation that we've uh, put out there. 
and uh, we've uh, talked a little bit about uh, what uh, Representative Rocky Miller has been involved with. I think um, I think we've had a, a good opportunity to kind of examine that. We have uh, Representative Miller in here, Presiding Commissioner of Camden County, uh, Greg Hasty, Citizen Advocate uh, Stacy Short. Is it safe to call you Citizen Advocate? Is it, do you, is that a good title for if you? people feel that way, it's fine. Well, I don't need of, a title. I'm just Stacy Shore. Yeah, okay. Well, all right. We're Stacy Shore. <laughs> I love the lake. Well, and, and, and everybody, and I think that's something we can all agree on again. Greg, you made a great point there saying that uh, we are all very passionate about our lake. And I, I, especially, I think, in this day and age, if we look back on some things that have happened in the past that have been very detrimental to this lake, um, you know, you talk about that three month span where people basically have. Their whole livelihoods mm-hmm. uh, that, that that are you know on on the line. Uh, we get a stretch of bad weather, boy, that really throws a wrench into the works. Uh, you know, you got a holiday weekend. You're praying for great weather from Thursday to about Monday or Tuesday, depending on when folks come down, how long they stay, and when they leave. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're also looking at um, the the media, which obviously we've determined can have a major effect on whether or folks come to the lake. And and here at the radio station, I got to tell you, folks, two calls we receive especially around the holidays. Number one, what's the weather going to be like? And number two, what's the condition of the lake? And we'll say, well, what's the condition of the lake? Well, you know, is there anything in the water that we need to be aware of? Uh, so these yeah, the, E. coli... Yeah, yeah let me, just, let me say this The E. coli that. scares that have been uh, have right. blown up by the Kansas City and St. Louis yeah. media have yeah. really thrown a wrench in the works yeah, here. Yeah, let me, let me just get to that one right quick, because I think... and and. and I hate to be this blunt about it, but when you have a governor rolling down here and talking yes. about how dirty the Lake of the Ozarks is. And an attorney yes. general. Yes. And that, that, was, that was pretty dirty stuff. Yes. For, to my mind, and I've been here all of my life, and I know this Lake of the Ozarks. Our Lake of the Ozarks has walleye. And if you've got walleye, walleye are a pristine water fish. If you've got walleye, that means you've got a very clean waterway. So if it comes down to between the fish and the politician, I'm going to believe the fish every time. <laughs> and the fishing on this lake is incredible. Mm-hmm. And what that speaks to is the 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 quality of our reservoir. Mm-hmm. Um, the the fish are saying it for us. We got one of the best fishing lakes in the country. Yeah, mm-hmm. Well, we're, we're and we're we're lucky. At last I checked, I'm an environmental engineer, and uh, and also a surveyor. Yeah, pretty good. I, I, I pretty pre- good at both. I prefer the I prefer the surveyor title most of the time, <laughs> to be quite honest. But uh, yeah, we we're lucky. We're surrounded by humans. Humans take care of their waste. Places like oh, let's say Mark Twain Lake is surrounded by uh, soybeans, corn, yeah. cattle, pigs, turkeys. Those guys have a hard time cleaning up after yeah. themselves. Actually, uh, Greg and I worked on, uh, we called them easements for City of Lake Ozark. Lake Ozark, Osage Beach, Sunrise Beach, they have sewer systems A long time now. ago. Yeah. So we're cleaned up. 1996, we've got uh, uh, rules for areas outside of that where they have to have septic tanks now. Yeah. Used when to I, be. When I first when I started start, selling real estate, yeah. that was the When I first yeah. started surveying on the strip in Lake Ozark, they straight piped the sewer right into the lake if you were on the backside surveying that you'd watch the pipe and out it would shoot well you know rocky and i worked on that back maybe 1983 yep and now we've got sewer systems those sewer systems are now in osage beach lake ozark and and, you know they're reaching out the quality of our environment Mm -hmm. is becoming better and better and it's because of the growth and the tax dollars generated we're doing both things at the same yeah. time this is effective government i want to say and, something and rocky, about rocky stepping in on this thing you know with regard to putting a stop on the governor i appreciate that perspective. absolutely great i want to job. say this too and kudos to you just so people know that this isn't about rocky miller this is just that we disagree on a piece of legislation oh. but i want to say this i thank you and i'm a fan for the legislation that you've proposed that supports making the school year shorter statewide so the businesses locally that depend on those you know tourism dollars and that's the foresight that you have that so many of us do see that you champion so many rights at the lake so if this isn't a matter of you know he you do a lot of great things and we acknowledge it and i just want to say thank you for having that insight that you do try to protect the businesses here so it's not that Again, we just have a difference of perspective, but I oh, appreciate I so much of what you do and 
you you really champion so many causes from abortion to Lake of the Ozarks that I can't even tell you enough I, how much and I, I and appreciate I appreciate what position. you do, and that's why it concerns me mm-hmm. when you say something. If somebody else says something, to be quite honest, I'll talk to them and we'll discuss things and things. But when you say something, mm-hmm. Stacy Shore, it concerns me in the fact that you are an advocate for the area, right? And when you say something, I'm concerned of the negative consequences. And that's what I'm that's worried what about is, that. is I had somebody say, well, that's it. I'm not going to develop any more at Lake of the Ozarks until this is taken care of. It needs to be taken care well, of, Rocky, it, it, because it's the it, truth. And, and I agree with you. I mean, the you. truth has I, negative I, consequences I agree sometimes. with you, and it's working its way through. However, here's the deal. That's a little extreme. I doubt. I disagree I, 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 We both disagree on that. However, I told the guy, I said, you are then very well needing the very low interest rate you are taking from the bank now rather than the higher interest rate you would have if you would go ahead and develop here at Lake of the Ozarks. Again, my point is you, sup- you sponsor a lot of good legislation, but Thank this you. is a really bad piece of legislation. I, I disagree with you. We bo- I know I, that. I, and so, so that's noted. fine. And we, 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 both, we both get it. Uh, let, let, let's uh, let's, let's talk move on about to David let's, uh, let's, let's Hold on for just a moment. Let, let's understand one thing that I think once this this comes to a vote, if indeed this legislation remains in place, I don't think that the other legislators that will be voting on this have the understanding that all of us in this room have based on how this lake works. Right. And so much depends on th- this place being open when it's ne- when it needs to be open, so the livelihoods of people that uh, work and live on the water, uh, you know, all the folks that are involved with the boating industry in one way, shape, or form or another. And, and there's so much, and, and not just those folks. The hotels and the motels and, and any business and every business, restaurants and, and retail, and, and I mean the list goes on and on. I could sit here and try and name them all off, but I would inevitably leave something out. The point of the matter is, is this discussion needs to be made available mm-hmm. to the folks that are going to be voting on this bill so they understand the full impact of what it is they're voting on. Because, you know, you talk about the Lake of the Ozarks, there are other waterways in the state None more popular, in, in my opinion, anyway, than this this particular waterway, Truman Lake, which uh, you know does a great job, and Palm de Terre and other areas. But the number one recreational lake in the in the country, which we've all said at least once during this discussion here this morning, uh, so far, it, it it begs the attentiveness of those legislators so that everybody has the full idea of what it is they're voting on. So they look at it and they say, oh yeah, okay, that's no big deal. And they vote on it, and the next thing you know, there are people that are thinking in the backs of their minds. And and, and I agree. The next thing you know, the water patrol is merged with the highway patrol. That's the next thing you know. That's the next thing you know. And that's why it's important. We have a great crew here. With I I I appreciate the fact that we've got Diane Franklin, we've got David Wood, we have three other three total representatives that the lake is their center of what they think about. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and and. From my perspective, absolutely, the demerger of the Highway Patrol and Water Patrol is something that everybody needs to get behind. We know what we had on Lake of the Ozarks and statewide. You know, the Water Patrol has a tremendous effect on our livelihood yeah. and on our lifestyle. So, you know, I've, I'm a huge supporter of Diane's bill. Well, she'll, she'll be in on March the 4th to discuss that here on this program. Go ahead. Can I just say one quick thing sure. to, Rocky's, to your point and Rocky's point? The issue is when a bill is sponsored in Jefferson City, the hard part is just to your point. When you go, I get three minutes as a citizen. Mm-hmm. I have to sit in front of a committee and defend my position in three minutes. That's not enough time. And so that's the frustrating part is that's how you redress your government when it comes to a bill that's sponsored that they may not see the negative consequences. We don't have much ability to have a voice. And that's the frustrating part is that how do we do that? Well, you're right. They don't have an idea what they vote on 90 percent of the time. And part of my worry, and I've seen it happen year after year, a bill like this one or David Woods or parts of his bill could get extrapolated as amendments and tagged on to Diane Franklin's bill. And that's another real concern that I have because I see these omnibus bills grow big, hairy, ugly legs and take off in a direction that they were never intended to take off in the first place 
that's a concern to me. And well, certainly, just, just like the merger of the uh, Water Patrol and Highway Patrol. And, and right. certainly, uh, again, when you talk about a main bill that everybody's focusing on and yes. little things get added to it uh, in different spots that nobody knows about, and then uh, something happens and you're like, well, when did that happen? Yes. Well, it was added on as an amendment to the to the, the, the bill, uh, you know, anything that we could talk about. Right. But as far as, again, the, uh, the three minutes, well, I know the governor <clears throat> has people that listen to this radio station right. directly. And because oh, we, we've received Good. we've we've received emails after we've had particular conversations in the past from uh, someone at the governor's office, and it's like, how did that press release come out so fast? Well, yeah. uh, it's almost that somebody's listening. Nine fifty-seven is our time. Um, we we took most of the hour to talk uh, with Rocky in, uh, in 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 his legislation and, and the the back and forth and the pros and cons. So I guess uh, we'll take it up to the top of the hour. But if we want to open the Open the legislation, open the discussion. Well, maybe we'll do that next hour. I've got a, a quick break to take. I'll squeeze it in real fast. We'll go up to the top of the hour. We'll come back with more, including your phone calls on The Morning Magazine on KRMS. Is your business philosophy one of prosperity or depression? Are you one of those people who say, business is slow, I can't afford to advertise? The truth is, business is slow because you don't advertise ebusinessreportviper.com is a free website that is your gateway to thousands of resources all aimed at helping you grow your business through advertising. Maybe you never used radio advertising because you didn't know where to start or you felt overwhelmed by all the options. ebusinessreportviper.com is filled with tips and secrets from industry experts, commercial advice, and access to radio professionals who are there to answer your questions and provide sound advertising help. Get started right now at ebusinessreportviper.com. Sign up for our free eBusiness Report newsletter and start getting valuable tips and advice that you can turn into increased sales right now. After all, if you don't advertise your business, how are people supposed to patronize it? eBusinessReportViper.com. Your best business resource is just a few keystrokes away ebusinessreportviper.com. Hi, this is Barbara Bunch, a trained, certified marketing professional. I've been helping businesses grow sales in the lake and surrounding areas for almost 11 years. Call me at 302-4646 or go to ebusinessreportviper.com. Your station for weather is News Talk 1150 and 97.5 KRMS. Fifteen full-time meteorologists will deliver advance warning anytime, day or night. Emergency weather is sponsored by Precision Auto in Osage Beach because they want you safe in your car and home. When severe weather breaks out, we'll break in to keep you informed. It's what you expect from Precision Auto and the news leader in central Missouri, KRMS. North Korea is testing a missile, perfecting a missile. Russian air power in full force over Syria. News Talk 1150, KRMS. 9.59 is our time, folks, and we're going to take it up to the top of the hour. CBS and local news is on the way. The Talk of the Lake, News Talk 1150, KRMS, Osage Beach, and 97.5 KRMS-FM, Lori. Again, we uh, bring to the uh, table for our forum discussion, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, HB uh, 1885. Before we open up the phone lines, we've got Stacy Shore, Presiding Commissioner of Camden County, Greg Hasty, and State Representative Rocky Miller in the studio. And again, thanks to all of you. Some great conversation last hour. I think uh, we're making some headway. We're certainly giving our listeners plenty to talk about. Let's bring to the table HB uh, 1885. And this is how it reads, as I have it here, on uh, the Missouri Re- uh, House of Representatives uh, uh, the, 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 the way the bill is proposed, it says, uh, modifies no-wake provisions on the waters of this state and sets out the framework for the establishment of Cove Watch programs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when you think about it now, when we think about that, uh, who doesn't like a no-wake zone? Who, who, who at the Lake of the Ozarks wants their dock torn up, wants their property torn up? And when we talk about um, no-wake, that is obviously something that uh, a lot of folks are concerned with, especially when we did uh, put a, a no wake in place for the lake back in July of last year with the flooding. And uh, again, with the, some of the conversation we've had going into this new year, the uh, bill is sponsored by uh, Representative David Wood and also talks about these Cove Watch programs. And as we have noted 
you know, you, you've got the Neighborhood Watch. Why not the Cove Watch program? So, um, Rocky, I know you're kind of filling in for David a little bit here. Maybe since uh, Stacy started last hour, maybe you start the discussion this hour with his thoughts on uh, HP uh, 1885. Actually, I'm going to defer again because I have no problem with Stacy <laughs> starting off, and then I, that maybe is more efficient than I will go through and, and – just kind of say, okay, here's what I think it means. Point, counterpoint. Yeah, okay. maybe All maybe right. work out if I think that works out I'd, with her. I would love that because there's three different key components to his bill. So if we could just quickly address the three, I'll start with one and let you and have you respond. The first of which, and when you actually read the bill itself, uh, it starts in four and five and it gives definitive like examples. Cruisers shall not operate within 300 feet from a shore. And it's in the section five vessels, 30 feet in length or greater. Um, with ballast added for the purpose of creating larger wakes, shall not engage in plowing. It talks about that. But the most important element is when you go to six. And this is where I reference anchor pieces of legislation, that you anchor a state law, but then you open it up for interpreta- interpretation and change. And that's what happens in Section 6, where it says, The Water Patrol Division shall periodically review the slow no-wake provisions that he just made in Sections 4 and 5, um, of this section as they apply to Lake of the Ozarks with the first review to occur on or before January 1st of 2017. When it says that, upon review, the Water Tr- Patrol shall make recommendations to any, and that's a big word in legislation, modifications needed to slow no wake laws as they apply to Lake of the Ozarks, and the Department of Public Safety may promulgate all, another big word in legislation, rules and regulations they deem it says deemed appropriate based on their recommendations first i have an issue with the fact that he anchors the legislation with definition in the the sections prior but then he opens it up in the next section for complete interpretation that can deviate from what he just established in three and four am i reading it wrong you may not be reading it wrong but i can tell you intent yes intent was not to have anything to do with the stuff above Right. The intent was probably even wider reaching than, I mean, it, it was meant to be wide reaching. Right. They haven't reviewed their rules for Lake of the Ozarks in many, 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 many years. Right. This is to get them, the intent is to get them to review their rules and propose rules that maybe could make it better. Because quite honestly, on some weekends out there, it's a little bit like the Wild Wild West. That goes back to something I've got a big problem with is we don't have enough, enough I'm going to say enforcement, we don't have enough people out there Agreed. to take care of it. Yeah, so anyway, I agree with that. That, that, that's kind of what the intent of that was. Now, here's the deal. They could go there this week mm-hmm. and do everything that that bill says. So they why could, do we need it? Exactly. If we had people that would do it, Again, we though, wouldn't need it. That's leadership, and that's incumbent <laughs> on the voters of Missouri to vote in those leaders that will do it, but the issue is to enshrine that in state law when they already have the ability, but then you p- specifically point that to the size of boats, what plowing means, all these different things that put this onus and a burden on our water patrol, yeah, this, which we don't even ha- yeah. have hardly any of. <laughs> the problem becomes, again, the anchor piece of legislation that's subject to interpretation, that becomes scary because they can start with a 45-foot boat. But can it be a ski? Bo- I mean, a ski boat, a fishing boat tomorrow. What does that you look know, I like? Think, I think what you're what you're talking about, Stacy, is just kind of like the same thing along the lines with with regard to the the uh, water quality issue. You know, uh, uh, at some point in time, a set of standards were set, and that Rocky absolutely knew was not applicable, and we had to have some changes made. And I think your concern is that. What will be the standards, what are the standards going to be set at, and you're going to have people outside of maybe the best interest of our lake possibly having the decision to be able to make those decisions. And and, and I get that. The first part of the bill, to be quite honest, if you've noticed, I've been, you can almost hear the crickets whenever it's mentioned with me, because honestly, it's not because I don't like it, it's because I'm concerned Mm -hmm. about what it does and how it would affect my part of the lake, we right. get sort of uh, territorial sometimes yes, when do. it's when it's like <laughs> now. David represents the Gravois Arm. Mm-hmm. Gravois Arm recently had a large commercial structure built at the end uh, that is a lot of people like to go to, and they drive big boats down there, and it's causing damage. So his constituents say, "Okay, these are the things that we would like to do." Right. So his his from his constituents. 
they're very happy with the first part of the rule. Now, here's where everything, we get kind of lucky. I have to look at it and go, boy, that could, I could see some, sure. some problems with that. So we're, we're going to look at that further. Now, I consider what you're talking about, what, I, what I'm thinking of is called, in my mind, the second part of the bill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wish it wouldn't have to be there. I wish they would go out there and enforce the rules we have. Thank you. The law, excuse me, enforce the laws we have. The laws that are there. The laws we have and make rules to make that enforcement prudent and and workable. Mm -hmm. They're not doing it. No. So when something's... Rocky, why is that? Do you think it is just simply not having enough people? No, I, 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 yeah, yeah. They don't want to make more work for them, you know? See it. They don't want to make more work for them. So it's... You know, now, do I want a bunch of cops out there? No. Right. I mean, but what I want to do is I want to preserve a little bit of what we've got. And that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to preserve it. what he's got. But okay. when you when you attach that, though, oh, that's I know. what's difficult. Because uh, believe me, I the get anchor it. piece of it, it's subjective and open for interpretation as of January 1st, 2017, when it comes to no wake, the no wake laws, plural. Yeah. Then it says laws, plural, with an S. Yeah, that's not. We can't diminish what that means when real-life and, and life I, what I, what I, I get what you're saying, but the intent is to get them to do something. Right. Mm. Don't, you think, <laughs> don't you think that we're at a point where, obviously, we're becoming more and more popular, and, and apparently we're the most popular in the United States now? Can Number one enough? recreational lake of the country. Yeah, again, <laughs> say that again. <laughs> <laughs> recreational lake and, and, of the country. And, but yeah. at what point do we reach a... Crit- critical mass where we tip over the edge. You 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 have to understand and realize that you, every time there's an issue, you can't always look for a piece of legislation to solve the problem. Because number one, mm-hmm. <clears throat> as you stated, there's not enough bodies on the lake. That's just a fact. Number two, not only are there not enough bodies on the lake, but in order to make up for that, now you have the United States Coast Guard that's going to have a, a bigger presence on the Lake of the Ozarks. And so then where does that fine, that line, fine line, you know, that legislation where, okay, the boater goes out there and I the boater's basically... the federal government on our lake. I, I, I think a lot of people are the same way. But the whole fact of the matter is, is okay, you're, you're out on the lake one day having fun. You get pulled over by the Water Patrol for one reason, and then they tell you one thing, and then maybe you get pulled over by the Coast Guard the uh, uh, next hour, and they tell you something completely okay. different. So now, what do you do? You've got two groups that are out there trying to enforce the laws, trying to keep people safe, confusing the daylights out of the boaters. So what about the legislation? Well, I think a lot of times... You got so many laws on the books that are that are not being enforced now. Why add to it? And in in the in the bigger spectrum of what we're trying to do here at the lake, education versus legislation. Thank you. If you can educl- if you can educate the voter, but at the same time, then you know when we're sitting here saying that, and you see somebody from out of state cruising down the lake with wide open, without a care in the world, and you know people hanging off the boat, and and, and all the things we're sitting here talking about, and they have complete and total disregard. Then what do you do? I mean, it's almost a catch twenty two. Well, I, I want to go into the worst part of David Wood's bill, in my opinion. If we can go into the second, because there's a lot about this bill I don't like. But for the sake of time, I want to just go over his section eight. Starts this way: a violation of any provision of this section shall be deemed an infraction. And then it goes into describing the Water Patrol Division of the State Highway Patrol work in conjunction with local law enforcement to provide guidance to citizens. It talks about Cove Watch, but the problem I have, it, it continues to go into one, two, and then it says um, Cove Watch means a group of people living in the same area in residences located on or near the water who want to make their neighborhoods cove safer by working together in conjunction with Water Patrol and law enforcement. Now, here's the big part to promote safer water practices. And improve the quality of life. And then the end of it says, the Department of Public Safety will promulgate all necessary rules and regulations to administer this section. But it doesn't tell us what any of those rules or regulations look like. It just gives them carte blanche. You write what it should be to give, to make the quality of life better at Lake of the Ozarks. That's not okay. That's not okay. We're handing I, all I authority. Want, I want to step right in to the middle of this one. And the reason why I want to step in is because of the potential effect that I see with regard to the way that's written and the and what it could do to our waterfront uh, establishments. Mm-hmm. We are a lake that is not, we're, and I've said this time and time again, we're not like Pensacola Beach where all the 
uh, you know, all the the play stuff is in one spot and, and the residences are another. We have a, a unique situation in which you've got miles of shoreline that are nothing but single family residential homes or maybe a few condos here and there. And then right in the middle of a residential community, you've got a, a restaurant that's been there for, for 30 or 40 or 50 years. That's never going to change on Lake of the Ozarks. It's part of what we have to live with, and it's complex. All these people want to have that place to go to on the weekend that live in that area, but yet at the same time, the congestion can create problems, and that piece of that piece of legislation. Quality of life. Uh, uh, could, oh, you know it makes my heart burn. Well, what what I'm mm-hmm. seeing is the potential for uh, uh, lawsuits lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit well, whose quality of life mine or theirs who you gets know, to define um, mine looks way different so, than theirs so and, and that that has to do with the generations that live here on you know when you're a young young kid i you know i used to be a young kid on lake of the ozarks and i wanted to go to some of those spots and have a good time yeah and now i just want to be left alone yeah, <laughs> yeah I, okay i i'll go i'll go straight to uh <clears throat> intent let's let's go straight to intent there uh again gravoid mills gravoid mm-hmm. arm Ivy Bend. Mm-hmm. If anybody is aware of Ivy Bend, Ivy Bend has a watch group mm-hmm. that honestly is pretty successful with what yeah. they do. There's not a whole lot of law enforcement out there, and right. they kind of watch over each other's back and make sure that everything's being taken care of. They like that method yeah. of police forcing. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is a method in which to get that done. Now, <laughs> I see a I, lot of old I, ladies I, with binoculars I, 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 looking, uh, right. calling, uh, having yeah. somebody on speed and, and dial. Believe me, and they call me. It seems like <laughs> uh, on occasion. But let me, let me, <laughs> let me kind of leave a little bit of fear. Yeah, leave a little bit. Mm-hmm. These rules that they can make up willy mm-hmm. nilly. Uh-huh. Those rules have to go before something. J Carr, I already know. Yep, I already understand how that works, and it doesn't work in our favor most actually, of the time. Actually, this week mm-hmm. I got to vote on a J Carr. Uh, Senate concurrent resolution, which gets rid of rules you don't like. If they make a rule, if an agency makes a rule, you then, through JCAR, can do a, a Senate concurrent resolution, which has nothing to do with the governor. It just says, oh, by the way, that rule can is I no longer in effect. Can I explain what JCAR means real quick for the That's normal citizen? Real quick, because we need to get okay. into but a break, and I want to get just my phone lines open for the When a law callers. goes through and it gets signed into law, what happens is that the entity in charge of that bureaucratic agency gets to write the rules and regulations and interpret that law as they see fit. Too often, those that they reflect the agenda of a governor or the agenda doesn't match that of mine and yours. So the intent of a law may be really good, but if you've got a radical you know, attorney on staff and they interpret those laws into rules and regulations, they look completely different than what the intent was meant to be. So we have opportunity, but a very small one, to redress our government with JCAR, but it's very difficult, and it's a very small window, and it hasn't really worked in favor of the people, and that's another story for another day. I'll agree day. with your first two parts. The last part, it worked this week. Well, good to, good to know. <laughs> Let me just jump in here real quick and say Cove Watch programs, Rocky, like you mentioned, can be established by the citizens on their own. When you start asking the government to, uh, you know, get the citizens and be good citizens, and if some yeah. – does anybody know what socialism means in, in the USSR? Yeah. That, uh, uh, Bernie I'm, does. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> but but allowing you know the government to step in and and establish Cove Watch programs, you know I'm I'm a good citizen, I'm a good comrade, and if my other comrades aren't doing what they're Thank supposed you. to be doing and pulling <laughs> and pulling their weight, then it is my duty as a good citizen and a good comrade to report them to to whoever the uh, KGB or the FBI or the CIA. Ten twenty six or the Coast Guard. We'll take a break, come back, and we're going to open up the phones to you on KRMS. Is your business philosophy one of prosperity or depression? Are you one of those people who say, business is slow, I can't afford to advertise? The truth is, business is slow because you don't advertise. eBusinessReportViper.com is a free website that is your gateway to thousands of resources all aimed at helping you grow your business through advertising. Maybe you never used radio advertising because you didn't know where to start or you felt overwhelmed by all the options. eBusinessReportViper.com is filled with tips and secrets from industry experts, commercial advice, and access to radio professionals who are there to answer your questions and provide sound advertising help. Get started right now at eBusinessReportViper.com. 
Sign up for our free e-business report newsletter and start getting valuable tips and advice that you can turn into increased sales right now. After all, if you don't advertise your business, how are people supposed to patronize it? eBusinessReportViper.com. Your best business resource is just a few keystrokes away. eBusinessReportViper.com. Hi, this is Bob May. As a trained and experienced certified marketing professional, I've been helping businesses grow sales around the lake for many years. Give me a call at 348-2772 or go to eBusinessReportViper.com. A deadly shootout in Oregon. Cosby is expected back in court today. The explosive spread of the Zika virus. News Talk 1150, KRMS. 10:28. it is the morning magazine on KRMS. 67 degrees, few clouds, no precipitation showing up on our in-studio Doppler weather radar. And uh, we have invited you, the listeners, who have uh, sat by patiently for almost the last hour and a half to uh, chime in on the conversation we're having. Uh, I've got a listener on the phone, and uh, caller, I appreciate your patience. You have been very patient. Uh, Good morning. You're on KRMS. Caller, you still with us there? Hello? Hello. Go right ahead. Oh, hi, KB. It's Mindy Sales. How are you? Doing very well. How are you? I'm great, thanks. Um, a couple of things I wanted to talk about real quick. First, I just wanted to tell Greg that I know this hasn't been the topic of conversation today, but I just wanted to thank Greg for the work he's been trying to get accomplished in the um, commission's office. I know it's been crazy and hectic and not what he signed up for, and I just appreciated his professionalism. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But um, as for the bills that we're talking about today, the, as I listen to all this, and, and I'm not as knowledgeable as the three people there, um, but I do want to say... It seems to me, as I'm listening to this, that we are putting all these bills forward, which I'm not for because I don't want the government all over my lake. I'm not okay with this. But it seems to me that we keep going back to the same problem, and the problem is the Water Patrol. So why are we addressing the Water Patrol and get them to do what they're supposed to do without putting a bunch of laws to limit and um, are vague, as Stacey has said, and leave up a lot of interpretation? I understand the point of in- intent. The intent is good. The intent doesn't matter when um, government agencies come in and start doing things that, that were not part of the intent, but they have the ability to do because of the open-endedness of the bill. And so I would really like to – I'm confused why we aren't addressing seriously the Water Patrol issue, getting it fixed, fixing the mess that, that happened um, by them merging the two and um, handling the situation where it should be handled instead of throwing all these bills at us. Rocky, you want to swing away? Yeah, thank you. A, a, thank, actually, you. thank you for your phone call. Good question. Actually, perfect. Can we drop the mic and leave now? Because that's kind of that, that kind of that well, kind of sums and, up the and, whole thing. And I, I mean, guess I, that's where a lot of this has come from. Since the yeah. merger's taken place, now you're wanting to jump in with legislation, whereas before the Water Patrol has always been given the responsibility and done a fine job yes. of taking care of waterways themselves, not just our lake, but uh, every place where they're needed around the state. And so that's. That, that's a perfect question because we actually, I love it when we have an answer. We do have an answer. Diane Franklin has a bill that will take the Water Patrol out of the Highway Patrol and separate them out back the way they were. Um, Yay. <laughs> we had, and it's not a simple little idea that she had. There were hours and hours of meetings. Mm-hmm. There was, the colonel left. She put a lot of time in it. And there was a lot of stuff to happen. We have a new guy that's basically in charge of the Marine Division. That's a w- Marine Water Patrol guy. A lot of stuff has happened. But guess what hasn't happened? I think, on average, we had three Water Patrolmen on Lake of the Ozarks three. last year. Mm. Three. Mm. How many miles do we have? 1,300? Over, yeah. 1,100 11, 11, miles a short <laughs> Over 1,100, yeah. Yep. So, so we've got that, and so that's the bill we've got. That's the one... I, David, and Diane are pushing. The other legislation isn't needed if we have leadership. Good to know. And I that's, agree. That's, so that's where we're at. Uh, I think I, I pretty much have got mine completely on hold. Uh, David, I think, would like people to have the ability to talk in Jeff City about wake damage and stuff. What that does, though, uh, what that does, though, is gives credence and power to what Diane wants to do. Back to the phones we go, caller. Thanks for holding. You're on KRMS. Um, yes, just a couple of comments. Uh, first one being on the 661, um, for those people that have a foot of water in their yard when the lake is at 661, I definitely think that um, 
measurement needs to be put in there with um, the knowledge that surely government officials will understand, especially with FEMA in the area, um, how many people have been affected and had their yards and their the lower levels of their homes affected by such a thing. Um, second thing being, 20 years ago, you didn't have these humongous ocean-going boats on this lake to the extent you do today. You'd like to assume some of these people that are tourists, um, for the most part, would have the common sense to not come barreling down through a small arm of the river with a bunch of houses that are on flat ground and plow up giant waves, but they don't. Um, without Water Patrol or anybody else to police those people, there does need to be some type of legislation in place, or you're just going to have a party free-for-all with a bunch of ocean-going vessels on this lake that just continue to get bigger and bigger. Um, the third thing is I think some terminology needs to be changed. The lake being, quote, closed, that terminology last 4th of July being um, in charge of a business, I know many people heard that on the news in Kansas City and St. Louis, and even people that had no intention of going on the lake thought the area was closed. I, I think it should be restricted. You know, it's restricting some boating people, and I think those that were coming down here for other purposes on 4th of July were totally confused about they thought the whole area was cordoned off. Mm-hmm. So I think the, 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 way, yes. be, the way this was presented out uh, uh, to the public uh, really was had a devastating effect on our yeah. economy last year. It's unfortunate that we've had a, a situation take place on a 4th of July weekend and then also right at Christmas. Uh, right. Both of those things were, were really detrimental to our life. Well, I think the other point to be made, at 661, the lake during the summer, Rocky, do you know exact elevations of where it went? Was it... Um, it was almost 663 this summer, and then r- Christmas was almost, am I right? Was it well, 665 I, 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 I'm looking at Greg here because surveyors have a multitude of elevations we talk about. Right. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's the, the, the UE datum, yeah, it hit almost 662, and then it almost hit 663. Six, I thought it 663 almost 63 and yeah. 665 UE datum. at Christmas. Very close to 665. Right. So at, at 661, I just want to make for the uh, the wide berth of listeners that are listening, 661 is considerably different than what we saw during the 4th of July and definitely way different than what we saw yeah, at let Christmas. Me, let me just address that just a little bit. You know, uh, if you're if you're on at the five-mile marker and it's 664, well, uh, you might have some issues. But um, in 86, when we had the, the the biggest flood that I've ever seen around here, the Niangua arm of the Lake of the Ozarks had this watershed draining into it. Uh, there, it was, it got lake elevation wide in cer- certain areas on the Lake of the Ozarks. It got to six seventy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what took place in December of last year was elevations four or five foot higher than took place in eighty six. I didn't think I would ever see it. It was unbelievable the amount of water that was rolling into the Niangua arm. And the damage that took place. Oh. Uh, but it still wasn't as high as what the FEMA, current FEMA flood maps are. Wow. So we just had the biggest flood in the history of the Niangua Arm, and it was well below what FEMA said yeah. a 100 year flood would be. 1036, we've got to go back to the phones. Caller, thanks for holding you on KRMS. Go right ahead. KB, thanks to you and KRMS. You put on one one heck of a show today, and thank, thank you. your guests well, for My being guests there. are the re- they're the ones responsible, so thank you. I have uh, several uh, comments. Number one, doesn't Emmer and UE have something to say about what happens on this lake? Don't they own this lake? I mean, I would, I, I've never heard anybody say, well, Emmer and UE was there, and they agreed with this, they agreed with that, they disagreed with this. I, I, I'm just confused about that, and I think the public is, too. It is a privately owned lake, I, I think. The other thing is, if the highway patrol or the water patrol, whatever the hell you want to call them, stop you out in the lake and give you a citation for some one reason or the other, what county do they go to to pay that fine or go to court? And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the lake is surrounded by three, four counties. I'm not sure about that, but I'm I'm pretty positive about it. And and how does that work out? And uh, bless all you guys for for uh, 
sticking up for what you're doing today. It's a great show. And Thanks. I'll hang up and listen. Thanks for the phone call. Appreciate it. Anybody want to tackle any of that? Well, I, I can talk about Ameren first off. A, a, Ameren is involved. Uh, they were involved back in the closure on July 4th, the July 4th weekend. They were involved in that discussion, and, and, and they're, they're part of it. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as the uh, where you get your ticket at, it's the county you're sitting in. Uh, while they're while where the infraction happened at, I guess is correct, and they they have GPS now. I've always wondered back in the day though how they did that back when we didn't have the fancy GPSs and stuff like that. I mean, it, it, a yardstick. It could be yeah, it could yeah. be a little <laughs> a little confusing, but uh, those those are the answers that that I have on on this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's let me jump back in and get some more phone calls. We're getting close to a break. I want to get as many calls as we as we can for the last twenty minutes or so. Caller, go ahead. You're on KRMS. Uh, yeah, I wanted to address the issue and definition of plowing. Um, plowing is, from what I understand on this legislation, restricted to copes, which makes no sense whatsoever. Plowing is when a boat at idle is not plowing. A pl- boat on plane, which it has speed to it, is not plowing. It's in between, that in between mark. That's where when you're doing like 1,500, 2,000 RPMs, and basically you're not on plane, you're not idling, and that's plowing. And that produces the deepest weight okay. that a boat can produce. Very good. Thank you for the definition. We appreciate it. 1038, back to the phones. One more call before I've got to take a break. Call to that you. You're on KRMS. Well, I have one to say. I do appreciate you guys having talking about an issue that really affects our lake. And saying that, I do agree that Diane Franklin's bill should be supported by us. Like, we do need to split the Water Patrol and the State Patrol. And the other issue is, is I don't know if I, it's a good idea to start passing laws on something that, like flooding, that doesn't happen every year. It happens very, uh, I've lived here 30 years. I've never seen it flood like it did um, this last time. And having a law passed, for something that may not happen for another 30 years, I think it's kind of like that would be the knee-jerk reaction. And then you have to look, if this law gets passed and the interpretations are so vague, what's it going to look like in 20 or 30 years down the line? Mm-hmm. And but, when you don't have that kind of guarantee that somebody's not going to interpret it different, it could really wreak havoc on the economics of the lake. Great point. And so that's all I've got to say. Thanks for your phone call this morning at 1040. We've got to jump in and take a break. You're listening to The Morning Mag on KRMS. Back with more of your phone calls. Dock safety is your responsibility. Inspect your dock's wiring frequently. If you have questions, contact a qualified electrician or your local fire district to make sure you're doing everything possible to keep your family and friends safe at the lake. Learn more at safeatthelake.com. Perfect prime rib. Flavorful steaks cooked to perfection the way you like them. Plump, juicy chicken and the freshest of seafood. These are just a tiny sample of the delights that await you in the cozy atmosphere of a traditional English inn right here at the lake. It's Bentley's, of course, in Lake Ozark. Unique in the area, unmatched in service. Call Bill at 365-5301 for your reservation. Bentley's. Now open Wednesday through Saturday. Hi, it's KB sending out congratulations to my friends at Hewlett Chevrolet Buick GMC. You hear me talk about the service department all the time and the need for you to get in there and get all of your repairs done and some simple preventive maintenance. Well, here's a little something to keep in mind. Hewlett Chevrolet Buick GMC service department has recently been appointed as a AAA approved repair facility. They've gone through a very rigorous inspection process looking into the service department's practices, competence, and customer service. And that's right, they've taken the time to call customers Customers who have had service work done to find out if the work was done properly and if the customers were satisfied. They've also talked to the Better Business Bureau and the Consumer Protection Agency. Hey, this is a big honor for Hewlett Chevrolet Buick GMC, and as a customer, you've got the trust, the confidence, and the peace of mind that you're getting the repairs done properly by folks that have been certified by the National Institute for Automotive Service Excellence. That's right, ASE certified at Hewlett Chevrolet Buick GMC, North Business Route 5 in Camdenton, or shophewlett.com. Congratulations, guys. All this race, poor Ted Cruz. To God be the glory. We finished second. God bless the great state of Iowa. News Talk 1150, KRMS. 1042, we are back. 66 degrees, a few clouds. Nothing showing up on our in-studio Doppler weather radar. Get out and enjoy the Lake of the Ozarks while you still can. (laughs) 
That's why we're having this conversation this morning. Uh, let me go back to the phone calls. <laughs> you guys, I tell you what, I'm just seeing if you're paying attention. And let's uh, go back to the phones, caller. I appreciate you holding on. You're on KRMS. Good morning. Good morning. There's a lot of different issues being discussed. Uh, I'll just kind of try to hit them one by one. As far as flooding goes, let's try to do some more education on a lot of these billboards. We've got these billboards everywhere that says, think before you sink and don't drink. Mm -hmm. We get that. We've gotten that for years and years and years. Why don't we replace some of those with if the flood, if the lake level is over 661 or whatever you guys decide on, no wake. The other issue is that's a flooding issue. The other issue is, is water patrol. Yeah, we need to separate the highway patrol and all that. But as far as more water patrol in the lake, I'm not always in agree with because it seems like then when it hits summertime, all the water patrolmen are just enforcing about how many nipples are exposed versus how many people are causing wakes. And the other issue is, is uh, as far as the wake problem itself, wakes are caused mostly by the displacement of the boat. So if you're going to legislate wake laws, try to be more specific as far as a water displacement issue because a MTI, 50-foot MTI doing 175 miles an hour doesn't make much of a wake. But you've got a 50-foot cruiser that has a much larger wake or you know water displacement going 15 miles an hour causes a massive wake. So the problem isn't necessarily speed. It's water displacement, and I think you should focus on that more. Thank you for your phone call. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, our I, panel I, here, real quick on 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 um, uh, flooding. Yeah, education is. I'd much rather have education. Again, as uh, we've said over and over again, we need leadership on this. I mean, that's what we really need. We don't. What, uh, truly, I don't. I don't get any extra for filing a bill. I, they don't pay me extra. There's no bonus involved in it, so I would just assume not. I like filing stuff that gets rid of regulation rather than having it. Yeah. Now, uh, kind of skipping forward to his last deal. We've discovered that wake, defining wake, what's too much, what boats cause it and stuff, is a very complex issue, and we get that. Mm -hmm. That's why maybe we just need uh, enforcement. But here's the funny part. All the stuff you're talking about goes to leadership and enforcement, but then your middle part was, but we sure don't need any more water patrol out there. Well, you know, you, 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 there's certain things you can have and certain things you can't have, and, and I, I'm, I'm just... You know, water patrolmen can are a little bit like uh, uh, can be a little bit like a referee in a football or a basketball game. You know, you can regulate tightly, or you can let them play, and 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 so we have to you know we have to have I think separating water patrol where you have uh, those two different divisions, mm -hmm. and you have a group of dedicated men to the Lake of the Ozarks that understand the Lake of the Ozarks. They know how to regulate and and basically referee the game, you know. So so I think if we have some quality people, and, uh, we'll, and get, to, we'll and, get quality results. And to your point, I don't know if anybody's ever listened to the scanner on a busy weekend when they've got somebody that's trying to outrun the water patrol, and these base, these folks basically are working a certain section of the lake. You know, one guy will work from the 1 to the 15 or whatever, and then so on and so forth. Well, you know, I'm going as far as I can. You need to pick them up. And so as one water patrol officer is involved in the pursuit, and then another water patrol officer has to jump in because this one has to get back and, and watch his specific area of the lake, why is that? Well, because you're a little understaffed, and I don't think there's any argument as to whether or not putting more water patrol on the uh, on the lake is is going to cause more people to write tickets and things like that. Because I think you make a great point, and the water patrol knows when to when to lay back and when to step in. They're not out there harassing people. Um, the one issue we had back a couple of years ago with the shootout was when the Coast Guard was there going up and down the flotilla uh, inspecting mm -hmm. boats and asking questions. Now, that was obviously... It was uh, it was it, last year, and they were in SWAT out, outfits. Invasive, yeah. 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 And, 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 and that's that's the thing where you have these outside entities come in and, and essentially attack something that is... A, a a huge asset to the, our Lake of the Ozarks. You know, the shootout's a big deal. We need to be making sure we do what we can do to protect it. Yes. 1046, let's go back to the phones. Caller, I appreciate you holding on. You're on KRMS. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Great show there. Compliments to everybody that's on it. Everybody's got a good point. It really comes down to some basic things. Uh, basically, there's 27,000 uh, docks on the lake. Uh, there's 150, uh, actually it's a Marina Pier 31, there's 150 uh, offshore boat places for boat storage. So bottom line, it all adds up to about 31,000 boats on the Lake of the Ozarks. 
and only a few percentage of those is causing the problems. If you take 10 percent, that's only 3,000. Well, I would say there's probably only 1,500 that really cause the problem. But then it's those large boats, uh, not houseboats, not speedboats, but the large cruisers that are plowing and they're staying too close to the shore. So the solution is uh, the legislate and hold in effect the size of the boats that will be put on the lake, increase uh, in these rules and regulations, to my knowledge, haven't been in, uh, changed in over 30 years. Well, in 30 years, 30 years ago, a 28-foot, 32-foot cruiser was a big boat. Today, they're 72-foot cruisers, and they're tearing the lake up. So the solution, the, uh, and right now, the boys are only uh, 100 feet from the shore, and the coves that are non, uh, that you can't uh, have a wake in is 500 feet. So if they decrease the size of the, crow, uh, the coves, uh, for, for no wakes to uh, 800, 1,000 feet, uh, that would do it if they would increase the uh, buoys out in the lake from 100 feet to 300 feet, that would do it. Now, we want some people to come down and enjoy the south and enjoy the lake, but uh, somebody has got killed. They've already got killed. The kid that got thrown out, even the water patrol boat. So it's got to be taken care of. The state reps are doing a great, great job of trying to take care of this. I've met with them on meetings, and... In our area, it's a big, big problem, but statewide, it's a little problem. So it's hard with roads and bridges and unemployment and everything for this to get a lot of attention in the state. Right. Hopefully, and increase the water patrol. We've got a great man in charge of it. He's pledged to do a good job, and I hope they can enact some of these rules. Thank you, and God bless, and, and have a great day, everybody. Thanks for your phone call. Quick uh, email we've got in the studio here. It says, if the core of these and other laws is intent, then the intent must be written into the law, and judicial yes. interpretation Thank must you. include that. Absolutely. So let, let's uh, take that. Any thoughts on the last caller? If I'd not, like we, to address him real quick. Just, yeah, First ahead. of all, the reason it's a problem in our area is because we have a big lake here. Okay, it's not, so we agree it's not a problem statewide. The second thing is you take 300 feet on one side, 300 feet on the other, that's 600 feet. You create a pipeline by which all... All boats have to go. That creates a real danger, in my opinion, because you narrow the channel where big boats can traffic. So I just think that creates a whole new layer of danger that we're not addressing on the smaller areas of the water where it's not so wide. You know, yeah, so, I would agree with you that if you do something like that, you're going to concentrate a lot of boats in a small area, and it could definitely lead to more negative. dangerous. I environment. agree. Ten forty nine. Let's go back to the phone. Some great calls. Some great conversation on the morning magazine. Caller, good morning. You're on KRMS. Good morning. It's all about education. You get these vacationers out here renting boats, and they're not ed well educated. Yeah, sure, the boat rentals are teaching them the best they can, but I think personally, they need to like no. You need to have a license in order to operate a boat. I went to a class in my young age. I decided not to drive my family boat at the age of 16. My dad pushed it. If you want to drive that boat, you're going to have to take that class and pass it. And that's the way it should be out here, too. And the Coast Guard should be out there helping us along with the Water Patrol. All right, anyway, thanks. Thank thanks. You. Thank you for your phone call. Let's go back to the phones. Caller, good morning. You're on KRMS. Yeah, good morning. Um, Good show. Okay, uh, there's a lot of points being made here, but when it gets right down to it, all law enforcement needs to be local. I mean, all law enforcement needs to be local. Get rid of the highway patrol, get rid of the federal government off of our lake, because it makes too many... Three parties will, are never going to agree to any one point. So we need we need more lake patrol locally, and their boats need to be more recognizable, possibly orange structure or something on the boat needs to be more recognizable. And the way to get more people on the lake is more money. I mean, uh, lake patrol is more money. So whenever you have, you need to issue a license. If you have a uh, wake rider, anybody that wants to ride a wake needs to buy a license, like a fishing license, $30 for three months. Nothing wrong with that. Raises some money. If you've got a large boat and it would be technically how to set the uh, size or the tonnage or the footage, uh, but anybody that has a large boat that constantly makes wakes needs to pay a $200 extra fee for, you know, distur disturbing the lake. This money should all go to the 
Lake Patrol, not Highway Patrol, not short, or not uh, federal government, Lake Patrol. And uh, that way I think we can control what happens. And that, go ahead. No, I'm I was sorry. just going to say, uh, uh, thank you for your phone call. Uh, uh, do you have a, uh, or Did we get everything in there? Okay, I guess we did. Let's uh, take one more phone call, and then we need to uh, take a break. Caller, go ahead. You're on KRMS. Good morning. Um, I just have one problem, I think, with the discussion we've had this morning. And basically, you know, Rocky, you're basically saying, trust me, this is better than what we've got on the books. Um, but without being able to study what the current regulations and legislations are concerning the lake levels, I can't really make that determination whether it really is better or worse. So if, you know, if you do intend to move forward with the legislation, I think what would be helpful is if you could just post on your website or somewhere the current protocol and link the actual documents, not just your interpretation, because yeah, you know, we're uh, at a point the, where the thing is, is I, I don't think I said trust me. In addition, there is no protocol. That's the problem. But well, you've talked about though how the decision is currently made, and so there's got to be some sort of you. You would you hope know, so, but there's not. Okay. Well, so then how it's been done in the past. And why it what you're proposing is, is um, superior to it because, you know, unfortunately we're at a, a point where citizens can do a lot of research and so getting upset with people for trying to do the research and understanding it is not really very productive either. We just want to be able to make good, good decisions and weigh in on the legislation because we just see so many good intentions going bad. I, I get that. Unintended consequences is an important part of it. Uh, as far as getting upset at people for doing research, no, that, I've, I've talked with them and tried to talk with them to the point where I've decided that we're both enjoying the argument more than we are maybe getting somewhere. And I, and it becomes, I disagree. <laughs> I want to get somewhere. Sometimes it's a means to an end. I, I, it's not I, an I, argument. It's a discussion I, that's, and it's a means to an end. So I, I, I disagree. I, I, I agree, but I'm not going to, uh, I I'll keep talking to you. 10.54, I've got uh, one more break. I've got to squeeze in here. And the time permitting, we'll come back and take as many calls as we can to the top of the hour on The Morning Magazine on KRMS. Is your business philosophy one of prosperity or depression? Are you one of those people who say, business is slow, I can't afford to advertise? The truth is, business is slow because you don't advertise ebusinessreportviper.com is a free website that is your gateway to thousands of resources all aimed at helping you grow your business through advertising maybe you never used radio advertising because you didn't know where to start or you felt overwhelmed by all the options ebusinessreportviper.com is filled with tips and secrets from industry experts commercial advice and access to radio professionals who are there to answer your questions and provide sound advertising help get started right now at ebusinessreportviper.com Sign up for our free eBusiness Report newsletter and start getting valuable tips and advice that you can turn into increased sales right now. After all, if you don't advertise your business, how are people supposed to patronize it? eBusinessReportViper.com. Your best business resource is just a few keystrokes away. eBusinessReportViper.com. Hi, this is Laura Gahn. As a trained certified marketing professional, it's been my pleasure helping businesses grow sales in the Lake Area for nearly 10 years. And I can help you too. Call me at 348-2772 or go to ebusinessreportviper.com. Finding a great job in the Lake Area can be difficult unless you know someone. Well, let me introduce you to LakeJob.com. There, you'll find all the jobs available in this area, or you can post the kind of job you want. LakeJob.com will email you notification of new jobs and more, so you can stay on top of your job hunt. There's also a listing of rental property. LakeJob.com is sponsored by Hawk and Carstar and Sherry Byron of State Farm Insurance. LakeJob.com, proudly created by KRMS and 93.5 Rocks. The water crisis in Flint. The big and powerful blizzard. Three violent criminals cut their way out of the California prison. News Talk 1150, KRMS. 10.56, I'm going to read this email here while the discussion continues on off the air. It says, I wish both Senators Blunt and McCaskill had to frequently sit for two hours with such a strong and knowledgeable citizen's advocate. So hats off to you. And uh, thanks to all of you for coming in. Rock, uh, Rocky Miller, Greg Hasty. Stacey Shore, thank you so much. Let's uh, take with uh, the time we have remaining a couple of phone calls. Caller, go ahead. You're on KRMS. 
Hi, go ahead. You're on KRMS. All right, let's move ahead. Caller, good morning. You're on KRMS. Okay. Uh, I just wondered what happened to the uh, – I've had the uh, Coast Guard uh, boating course, I don't know, four or five times we took it with each one of our children as they got got uh, older. Not, and one thing they always uh, stressed was you are responsible for your wake. And I don't know. It seems like that that's gotten lost. So anyway, thanks. Thanks for your phone call. Appreciate it. I, and, and I think that's a, a large part of it as well. Uh, you know, as a society, we've kind of shunned personal responsibility. We're always looking for somebody else to uh, to babysit us and hold our hand. And maybe that's where the problem lies as well. Maybe there is a such uh, a simple solution. And that lady might have touched on it. 1058. Caller, good morning. You're on KRMS. Go right ahead. Good morning. I'd like to address two previous callers. Uh, first, the lady that had mentioned she thought we needed more Coast Guard down here. And then it was followed up with a gentleman that said, no, we don't. And I'd like to agree with that gentleman. Having more Coast Guard down here would be uh, similar to having the National Guard patrol the highways or the city streets. Um, nobody wants that. So why would we want that out on the water? The water is a recreational area, a place to have fun, not a place to be worried that there's a federal agent that's going to write you up for who knows what. Um, the gentleman that followed that call said, you know, we need to keep it local. Uh, that's a wonderful idea. There's all sorts of retired people down here, people that are very well able-bodied people that have boats that are enjoying the lake and want to continue enjoying it. Um, I think it'd be fairly easy with enough effort put forward to be able to come up with a local plan to have local residents, kind of like a neighborhood watch type thing, maybe they got paid a small fee for it because somehow you know stuff has to be paid for to, to get somebody to organize it. They've got to be paid for their time, obviously. But right. get get something together to where uh, you know. It, a person can go out for a month at a time. They go through. Caller, I'm, I'm going to have to jump in here. I, I hate to cut you off, but unfortunately, we are up against the clock. I think we got the gist of your idea, and thank you for your comment. Great comments, great questions, great input. Thanks to the three of you thank for you. being here. Uh, we'll do this you. again very soon because it seemed like it worked out very well. It's the morning magazine on KRMS. I'll talk to you Monday morning at Lakes six a.m. News Channel News Talk 1150 KRMS Osage Beach and 97.5 KRMS FM Laurie.